JHK here for the All Star, and join me right now is bantamweight prospect Arion Zethi. Thank you so much, man, yeah, for the time. Yeah. It sounds good. All right, all right, man. Yeah, it's perfect. All right, man. All right, hey, the last one we spoke, man, was a year ago, right before I believe the pandemic hit. You're about to fight Dylan, and the shit hit the fan. Where was your mind state at at that moment? I was so frustrated. We we learned that the fight wasn't going to happen because of COVID, two like a, like about thirty six hours away from weigh ins. So I mean, I was like down to like the last like six seven pounds. I was cutting weight. You know what I mean? And I was asking uh, the matchmaker like, hey, there's some rumblings about this. Like the fight's still going on, right? And he's like, yeah, man. Like by ten a.m., everything's still going. Everything's fine. And then by 5 p.m., the event's canceled, and, you know, they're going to try to reschedule it, but we don't know how long it's going to be. And then we try to reschedule it for a month later, and then, you know, a year and a half later, two years later, it, it finally happened. It was it was, the, it was, an immense frustration, both, like, uh, preliminary, because we didn't know how long it would be, and then to get like a year and a half to two years of, of my athletic career just basically, I don't want to say taken from me, but thrown to the wayside was, it It made me appreciate it when we did get it back. Like when we, when, that, that, was, that was a weird fight for me because I was just so happy to be fighting. And then when you got in there, man, you did your thing. A man at 40. Yeah, that was, that was another frustrating part because I thought, you know, with all the, all the shit he was talking and all the back and forth that it was going to be like, you know, he was promising me a war. He was promising me that he would be there the whole time and all this other stuff. And I'm like, okay, cool. And then we got in there and I was just like kind of shocked at how like, I was kind of shocked at how physically weak he was. I was shocked at how slow he was. I was just shocked. I don't know if that's the thing about this pandemic that kind of, I'll know for sure after this next fight, like I took, we all took about a year and a half, two years off, unless you were in the UFC but maybe there's going to be like this like weird gear that everyone's going to have to kind of check when they're getting back in to kind of get back in that that groove of things because i felt like that fight was like sparring like it didn't feel like a fight to me it felt like another day at the gym i was like oh man just everything from the pace to the power to everything was just it was a weird one for me it was it was it was by far my easiest fight and uh that's taken into consideration my amateur bouts so that one was a weird one i think that fight is a fight that you know when you're coming off such a long time away it, it 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 allows you to build some confidence off of it and momentum and and kind of gets you gets that spark going again a little bit because you know there was a lot of frustration for that time ahead of the fight no you're you're absolutely correct I, going into this fight because i had that fight i feel like i have an advantage over justin in the sense that he hasn't fought since before the pandemic while i had that fight and i feel like if guys are wanting to fight post pandemic, they better get these fights in quick because getting a year and a half, two years off. Um, and, and it's not like a year and a half, two years off where people were like training consistently and in the gym consistently. Like I know here for St. Louis, we were out of the gym for like a good six, seven months. We couldn't train at all. You know what I mean? And then when we could train, it was like, you had to like reserve a spot at the gym or whatever. And it was like reserve numbers and it was just weird shit. So um, if, if people are starting to slowly get back into competition, I would, I would recommend sooner rather than later, because the more fights I can line up or the more fights other people can line up, it's just experience getting back in there. Um, and I think that'll be like a small advantage I have, cause I've already kind of been there and done that getting back in versus Justin, who hasn't fought in two and a half, two years. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's polar opposites, man, heading into this fight and, uh, you know, with your training, how is it? Is there still restrictions and like rules and regulations? No, luckily, like, you know, mandates and all that stuff, the majority of them have been lifted. Um, the majority of everybody at the gym has either had COVID and gotten over it, uh, got the vaccine, or got the vaccine and got COVID and got over it. So for the most part, like, we're not really worried about that. Like, COVID, I don't want to say that we're not worried about COVID, but we, we just uh, don't really have any sort of thoughts about it anymore. It's, it's very reminiscent to before COVID. When I go to the gym, we don't even talk about it anymore. The only thing we do still kind of fear is someone getting it before a fight because you have all of these reasons why a fight can't happen. Maybe 
you get hurt, right? Like a broken bone, a cut, whatever. Maybe you can't make weight for whatever reason. Maybe your opponent gets hurt or can't make weight. And now on top of all of that, now you add, you know, you and I can be on weight, we can be healthy, we can be all these things. But if I get COVID two weeks before the fight, there goes the fight. Or if you get COVID two weeks before the fight, there goes the fight, regardless of any waiver you sign or whatever. So it's just kind of like a, another tier of anxiety. There's, I don't think people will appreciate how much shit has to go in to actually getting a fight down. Like, if, if this was just, you know, okay, let's sign up and show up and fight, then maybe there would be a lot more fights, but you gotta, you know... You got to get the money right. You got to get the venue. You got to get the dates. You got to get the weigh-ins. You got to make sure everyone's healthy. You got to make sure all this bullshit gets kind of done. And by the time the fight actually happens, I, I mean, as a fighter, I can tell you, it's like all the anxieties before the fight. By the time you're there at the venue ready to fight, you're like, thank God. Like, at least this is going to happen. You know what I mean? Like, this. I'm just happy that um, we got another one lined up. I. Uh, I don't want to shoot myself with the foot for saying this, but it looks like everything will be fine and we're going to go in there and, and have a scrap. So I'm just ready to get another win. I'm just ready to propel my career. I'm just ready to, you know, make another statement. For sure. And uh, Justin King, man, what can you tell us about him? Short, explosive, athletic guy. Um, he, he is dangerous. Those bombs same as fucking everybody if i can be honest with you i i hate these things that like uh people call accolades like oh he's athletic he's this he's that i'm trying to go through the motions but truth be told he's the same as everybody else once you get to a certain level everyone's explosive everyone's athletic everyone's tough and all this other shit so as far as i'm concerned he's another fighter that's gonna get his ass whooped he's he's probably got an idea of how this fight is gonna go but same thing that happened with Dylan. These guys, they train with people. They think certain things. They maybe in their head go through certain situations of how this fight is going to go. And then they get in there with me and they realize that I'm, I'm, I'm not like these other guys, especially in the local. You know, maybe once I get to the UFC, I'll start fighting some people that are cut from the same cloth as me. But until then, I'm the biggest fish in the smallest pond. I am the prospect. I am the shit here locally in the Midwest. I'm the guy to beat. I don't give a fuck who you are. And uh, Justin King's going to realize that on uh, on this weekend, October 23rd. Um, as far as he goes, his skill set, what he's good at, he's the same as everybody else I've fought. So I don't expect any sort of difference in the outcome, me getting my hand raised. Are you expecting to fight one more time this year, or are you going to just shut it down, enjoy the holidays, and 2022 comes around, that's when you start back up again? I don't know. Truth be told, depends on the opportunities. I mean, I, I never want to say never because, like, what if I get called like to Bellator or UFC after this one? Then my answer would be yes. Um, I know that Shamrock wants to do like this is kind of like a title eliminator thing. Um, they had two fighters fight two weeks ago, three weeks ago, and um, they want me to fight the winner of that fight. But I mean, to to answer your question, whether or not that'll happen this year, if it was up to me. Uh, I'd like March of 2022 simply because when when I came back for the Dylan fight March of 2021 this year, uh, I was like heavy, didn't really train that well, um, or I couldn't really train is the better way to say it. So like I had a three month camp where I was just like getting back into the groove of things, going hard, cutting a lot of weight, getting down to band weight. I was like 195. I had to get down to 135 and I did it and we fought. And then right after that fight, because I didn't have any damage, like I didn't even get punched in that fight we signed this one with Justin King. So it's like, I'm kind of going from two back to back hard camps, uh, keeping the weight down and everything, um, which is fine. It's, but if I, I don't have to fight in November, December. So if I don't have to, then uh, why not, you know, push it to like February, March. But that being said, I mean, I'm going to keep the weight down. I'm going to be training still just, you know, training for a fight, training for, for fun and to maintain our two different things. And then just see what kind of opportunities present themselves. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully I will. Hopefully I will fight again this year. UFC or Bellator. I don't know. Yeah, it is a it is an opportunistic sport, right? Like if it comes on, if it comes to your plate, you gotta eat it, man. Because if you don't eat it, someone else is yeah. gonna take your cookie. So my my answer is no <laughs> until it becomes yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, going back to what you just said about being 
you know, you blew up so much and then you took that camp to get you your weight down. It must have kind of played. Did it play with your mind a little bit? Because you're you're not really you're focused on skill, but not as much because you're trying to lose that weight. Dude, you I, I got to give you some credit real quick. You ask some of the best questions I've ever had on an interview. Like you, you, you genuinely listen and, and you kind of lead the conversation. And I just want to say, like, that is a fucking skill set. You that. are absolutely correct. That last camp was it wasn't about Dylan. It, it, Dylan wasn't even in my like, like I, I was like a horse with blinders. You can even ask the lady. She was, you know, not a, not happy with me those three months. I kind of sat down with her and I told her, I was like, babe. I have th like three months to lose 60 pounds and to get in shape and all this stuff. I was like, we're not going to have dinner dates. We are not going to be able to go out and do stuff. I was like, my life will be work. And then after work, I'm going to train. And then after train, I'm going to come home. I'm going to eat. I'm going to shower. I'm going to sleep. And that's what I did for three fucking months. I did not have a life. We did not go out. I did not have fun. And I think that's why the performance I had against Dylan kind of showed. You know what I mean? I, I truly dedicated my life to fighting for those three months it's all i it's all i did i went to work and then i trained for three four hours every fucking day no days off and um it was the hardest cut of my life i've never cut that much weight before it was one third of my body weight but it was also kind of i put that on myself because you know it was like the weight that i gained over covid you know what i mean it's not like someone put that weight on me it was uh i wanted to be a fat ass for a year and i had to pay the price so it was a tough camp, but I also told myself, like, after going through that, I told myself, I ain't going to get much worse than that. So, you know, at least I know my absolute limits. So crazy, man. So crazy that, you know, fighters can go through that and come back and still go out there and perform because you're fighting for your life. It's not like you're shooting a basketball, like you're losing this weight and then you go out there and shoot basketball shots. You're, you're out there risking like getting choked, getting knocked out, all kinds of consequences. I don't know. All I thought to myself was like, he's going through the same things I'm going through. You know what I mean? I'm not special in any way. I'm sure I'm weight. I'm sure he's rusty. I'm sure he's got this anxiety and all that stuff. And that's actually something that helps me out in these camps is like whenever I'm in the sauna or wherever I'm like feeling like shit or something aches, I think to myself, he's going through the same things I'm going through. You know, I am not, this is not isolated to just me. And that kind of helps me out. Once I realize that his life sucks too, it's okay if my life sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Find some uh, commonality between the fighters, right? Yeah. Now, uh, a couple questions, man, off topic, not about your fight, but just in MMA in general. You know, Colorado, the state boxing commission, they're adopting the open scoring in MMA and boxing. So basically, fighters, coaches, fans, during the fight between rounds, they will know what the scorecards look like. What are your thoughts on that and, and how it will impact fights? I, I'm surprised that that was not a thing up until this point. Fighting is fighting is weird to me because it's like it is a sport and then it's not a sport. It, it is a sport in the sense that we have wins, we have losses, we have uh, records that we keep and we have a rule set that we abide by, right? We sell tickets to fans and people can spectate. So like that's like a sport. But it's not like a sport because we don't have a scoreboard. We are left for interpretation. We have judges, but we don't have like a definitive, like a takedown is not worth one point, and then a punch is worth one point, and then, you know, a knockdown is worth 10 points. We don't have that. So it's it's really oftentimes subject to interpretation. And, and how many times have you heard a fighter loses a fight or wins a fight, and then afterwards they don't, you know, they don't like the outcome. They're like, I thought I won that fight or I thought I won round one. Why, why do we have this like a uh, guessing game? Why do I have to go when my, when I have fighters that. Oh, did he win that round? I'm like, I shouldn't have to like guess for you. Like we should know definitively, not, not just like on the rounds where they're easily scored like the guy got the takedown was grounding and pounding dominating that round obviously he won that round but if it's back and forth i'd like to know of the three judges who thought one man won who thought the other man won it, it'll change the paradigm of fights there's a lot of times where you see boxers or mma guys they'll coast round three maybe they think they won round one and two right and they'll coast round three but what if they actually knew that hey it's one round apiece it'll only make for better fights now that I say that, though, it could also 
on the same flip of that coin could make for worse fights if someone does know definitively that they're up two rounds. Maybe they will coast and they'll just take somebody down and like lay on them, get the win. Who cares? You know what I mean? Or if someone, if, if they get taken down, maybe they'll just kind of coast in the guard. They don't really care as long as like I don't get finished, I win the fight. There's pros and cons, but I think the benefits will outweigh the negatives in in that uh, in that instance. And I, I feel like uh, it it should be open because it'll also help the fighters during the fight understand what they need to do in order to win those judges' eyes. If I hit you a hundred times, but you drop me. And two judges say, I won that round, but one judge says, you won that round. Well, now I know that one judge looks for damage over volume or vice versa. I can adjust my game in real time, depending on how I know this fight is going. And I just think that the more transparency you can give, the better. I, I, and that's in all aspects of life, not just uh, combat sports. But the more knowledge I have, it'll only, it'll only help. So I like that they're doing that. Do that. Yeah, the, I like your perspective because you could also know if you were down 10-8 heading into the next round. Yeah. And that changes everything yeah. because you're like, and then also to counterbalance or to counter, I guess, I guess to balance it out, you would have pet like penalties for stalling in the third round. Just because you know you're winning, you shouldn't just dance around the cage for five minutes because we've seen that too, right? A guy definitely knows they're winning and they're just sidestepping through the whole round. I, I, I feel weird about this because, like, I, I am a fighter. And, like, I get the game. Like, I, I understand. Everyone just wants to win. But there's also, I, I, I'm learning more and more that winning is not everything. Sometimes, I'll give you a prime example. Corey Sandhagen loses the fight against TJ Dillashaw, but Dillashaw gets hurt, and now Sandhagen gets the, the interim title shot against um, uh, Piotr Jan. That shows to me that even though he lost, it was the method in which he lost. He was going out there. He was trying to fight. He was he was still putting it on the line. And I think that um, with the transparency of the points, listen, if, if you know you're down two rounds, obviously you're going to go out there like a bat out of hell. Vice versa, what if you're up two rounds and the guy's still pushing the pace? He's up two rounds and he could coast, but he's still looking for the finish. Then he deserves even more praise. So... With everything, it could be used negatively, it could be used positively, but I still stand by my comment of as long as you have the transparency, at least then we can make an educated um, um, interpretation afterwards versus saying like, oh, well, maybe he only was, you know, going balls to the walls because he knew he was down, quote unquote. But I don't know. I, I just like that they're doing that. I think there needs to be more more uniform rules and systems in place. I understand that here in the United States, like every state has its own athletic commission, but I would really like it if, I guess that's what they're doing in real time, right? Everyone's trying their own shit and they're going to see what works, what doesn't work. They'll, you know, I know that, that there's certain states that incorporate the, the, uh, the instant replay. Some states don't. Uh, so I guess Colorado is going to be the first state that, uh, you know, tries out, uh, open scoring in real time which i i think it'll be beneficial but only time will tell maybe it's the worst thing ever <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly we don't know we don't know yet all right man anyways october 23rd shamrock fc 333 ameristar casino and resort arion thank you so much man dude it's it was truly a pleasure